Hey, thank you for tuning in. We're so glad that you are here. My name is Chris. And I'm Kyle. And we are going to have some Jazzercise. fun today. What are you doing? <laughs> Orange. Or Onomatopoeia. What? <laughs> What's happening? School bus. School, yeah. What's happening right now, Kyle? I'm just getting ready because I'm learning some words, getting my big words out there and... <laughs> Why would right. you? Why do you need to get your big words out there? For the Mad Lib Challenge. For the Mad Lib Challenge. What's the Mad Lib Challenge? Why don't you check your phone right now, Chris? Check my phone yeah. right now. Yeah. Okay. For, uh, Got for a what? Big Mad Lib Challenge coming up. Okay. Yeah. Are you ready? I am ready. Okay. How about that? Wow. This is insane. Okay. I need you to name someone you're related to. Austin. Wow. Okay. Austin's gonna play a big role in this, I think. Okay, an adjective. Brown. We're gonna go through all of this. Let's okay. go. Adjective. Right. Small. Another adjective. Pinkish. A person in the room. Chris. Yeah, thank you. I was really wondering where you're going with that. Adjective. Bright. Another adjective. Flushed. Verb ending in ed. Puked. A body part. Toes. Toe. No, no, let's go big toe. Big, big toe. Big toe. Verb ending in ing. Skating. Noun, a plural one. Plural noun, plural Lots noun. Lots of them. Flamingos. Noun. Stool. An adverb. Uh, let's go slowly for adverb. Verb. Driving. Mm, not what I was gonna say. Wow, he went to driving. All right, another verb. Climbing. Another relative. Let's go Brad. Now a person that may be watching this. My grandma. I'm gonna say Grandma Kyle. This is called Letters from Camp. Ooh, I like camp. So we're writing a letter for camp. Dear Austin, I am having a brown time at camp. Not quite sure what that's gonna mean. The counselor is small and the food is pinkish. I met Chris and we became bright friends. Man, I think I've heard you say that sentence before. Yeah. Unfortunately, Chris is flushed and I puked my big toe so we couldn't go skating like everybody else. That's a bummer. That, is, that is a bummer, man. I need more flamingos in a stool sharpener. So please slowly drive more when you are climbing back. Your Brad, Grandma Kyle. You know, Chris, that absolutely sounds like something I would write home from camp about. That does sound like something you would say. And you know what? We are talking all about our words today. And so let's go learn right now what it's all about. This week, we're concluding with our series about responsibilities called Rules for Life. Today, we look at a letter Paul wrote called Ephesians. More specifically, we look at chapter 4 in this letter. And more specifically, we look at one tiny verse that talks about the power of our words. With what we say, we have the power, opportunity, and responsibility to encourage the people around us. We're going to learn all about why we should and how we can in just a little bit. But first, let's check back in with Kyle and Chris. That's right, you know what? We are going to play a little Words with Friends, Kyle. That, mean we're, that means we're friends. That does mean we're friends. Yeah! Wow. You write me letters from camp, and well, you didn't. Grandma Kyle wrote that. And it was also to Austin, not me, but. Yeah. You're still my friend. Oh, thanks. All right, okay. So is it my turn? Yes. All right. Ooh, look at these letters. I got, hmm. Ooh, it's probably not that great, is it? Yeah, we're gonna go for it. Sending it over to you, Kyle. All right. All right, let's see. Oh, get ready for this, get ready for this, get ready for... You ready for this? Oh. Not a great move, not a great move, but it's a move. <clears throat> Big move. Uh-oh, uh-oh, here we go. Oh! The thing is though, you took exactly where I was going with something. Don't appreciate that. Don't appreciate that at all. You get the little commercials that play after you move? Ah, uh, yeah, got them. I guess that's what happens when you get the free version. Did you move already? Whoa! Nah, no wow. big deal, no big deal. Wow. It's nothing, it's nothing, just a word. I mean, I'm, I'm humble about it. 
I mean, I'm like, it's, it is what it is. We're just playing a game, just a little game, a game that I must win and that I'm very passionate about. So that's, that's it. You can't just throw Z on the end of every word. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work like that. The thing is, I bet there are some people out here who are gonna watch this and they're gonna know exactly what we should have done. Yep. And we are we are disappointing them. Yep. And so that's a good Sorry. Word. It's a good thought I'm though very, to uh, yeah. to use your words, right? Even in your own head. Use your words <laughs> very wisely. We know we're not very good. <laughs> Speak for yourself. How, how is that not a word? Oh man. Oh come on. Crazy world. Six points. Whoa! No, he didn't. He went for it. Wow, that is, uh, that is, that's a little insane. There we go. There we go. Whoa! Sneaking in a letter like that. steal my word, but that was right where I was gonna go. <laughs> Are you at a? I got two letters left on my board. Hmm, there we go. Hmm. Oh. oh. Looks like you won, Chris. You know what? That was a good game, though. Sure, sure. You're really good with words. Hey, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. You know what? Yeah. I think it's time that we should actually take a look at that and break it down. Let's do, do it. Let's do it. Today, our win is to use our words wisely. It's a responsibility that God gives us. If we're being honest, this can be a difficult responsibility. It shouldn't be, but sometimes it is. God knows how much words can hurt people, but he also knows how much they can help people. That's why the Bible is full of so many encouraging words about the way God loves us. That's always the best place to start. God's love in words for us. Then we can live out this verse we're going to learn together from Paul's letters to the Ephesians. Let's check it out. Oh, wait, how'd this get here? That was a good game. I mean, we had a lot of, a lot of words to play out there. But. Yeah, it was, I, I don't know, maybe it just wasn't good in good letters, but man, it was hard to come up with words. Yeah, no, so. I mean, I'd probably play again if you want to do it. I mean, it's just yeah. words with friends, and you're my friend, so. Yeah, anytime, it sounds like. That's, right? that's good. Whether you're having a good day or a bad day, it always feels good to be built up by your friends and peers. Absolutely. You know what, Kyle, you look great today. Chris, your hair looks amazing. Well-placed positive words have the power to change your day for the better. But how does it feel when people use words to tear us down? Oftentimes, we don't think twice about how our words come off, whether that's positive or negative. But how we use our words, regardless of who we're talking to, might be more important than we think. The Apostle Paul spent a lot of his time in a church in a town called Ephesus. To stay in touch with churches, Paul wrote letters. One of those letters is found in the New Testament called Ephesians, and it was written by Paul to help change the way that they were treating each other, especially when it came to their words. Ephesians 4.29 says, Do not let any evil come out of your mouth. Say only what will help build others up and meet their needs. Then what you say will help others listen. Your words are strong and powerful. 
We can't lose sight of Paul's words. So when he says in that verse, don't let any evil talk come out of your mouths, that's a challenge for us to start working on right now. So then it says, say only what will help to build others up and meet their needs. We really need to think before we speak. Then what you say will help those who listen. Words can build up others, break down walls of separations, and repair relationships. Every one of us is at our best when we choose to honor God with the words that we speak to each other. If you need an example of words to use to build others up, look to Jesus. Throughout Jesus' life, he used words of hope and truth. One of the biggest ways you can bring meaning to those around you is by choosing your words carefully. Today's win is use our words wisely. Like and comment on this video and make sure you subscribe to the channel, guys. You don't want to miss out on anything else. See you next time. An adverb. Married to an English teacher. Man, what is an adverb? <laughs> I don't actually know. What is an adverb? I can't think right describes now. describes like a verb. Like, how were you running? I was running slowly. Yeah. Okay. So please slowly drive more when you are climbing back. Your Brad, Grandma Kyle. Absolutely. You know what, Kyle? You look great today. Chris, your hair looks amazing. Wow. Man. <laughs> Appreciate that. <laughs>